So at the original reading in 55, um, Kenneth Rexroth did not read any of his, of his own poetry. Um, since he's not here, I will read one of his. From a book that, that, that came out that year called, in, that came out the next year, 56, In Defense of the Earth. And this is called The Bad Old Days. The summer of 1918, I read The Jungle and The Research Magnificent. That fall, my father died and my aunt took me to Chicago to live. The first thing I did was to take a streetcar to the stockyards. In the winter afternoon, gritty and, and fetid, I walked through the filthy snow, through the squalid streets, looking shyly into the people's faces. Those who were home in the daytime, debauched and exhausted faces, starved and looted brains, faces like the faces in the senile and insane wards of charity hospitals, predatory faces of little children. Then as the soil twilight darkened under the green gas lamps and the sputtering people and the sputtering purple arc lamps, the faces of the men coming home from work, some still alive with the last pulse of hope or courage, some sly and bitter, some smart and silly, most of them already broken and empty, no life. Only blinding tiredness, worse than any tired animal, the sour smells of a thousand suppers of fried potatoes and fried cabbage bled into the street. I was giddy and sick, and not of my misery, I felt rising a terrible anger, and out of the anger, an absolute vow. Today, the evil is clean and prosperous, but it is everywhere. You don't have to take a streetcar to find it, and it is the same evil, and the misery, and the anger, and the vow are the same. Two other people who didn't read that night were uh, Lawrence Ferlinghetti and myself. <laughs> and, uh, and this is a poem I wrote inspired by a, uh, a line of Ferlinghetti's. It was uh, when I was in, a high school student. I uh, started hanging out at a coffee house in Pittsburgh in the, in the late 60s where they would perform the work of uh, Ginsburg and St. Lawrence and Yevgeny Yevtushenko and uh, a few other people. And at that time, uh, I had an extremely bad stutter, except when I read someone else's work or had something memorized, I didn't. Uh, it is a beautiful. The world is a beautiful place to be born into. The human world. This body of such variety, a thermometer of time. Time working like a CAT scan shows us in the middle of a circular path giving the outlines of other worlds, other instruments, whether they are mountains or thermal flows, able to suddenly change and shatter the conditions when you weren't paying attention. Well, I was too busy making plans, not making plans, having goals, not having goals, having too good a time, being depressed when I wasn't asleep, overindulging in intoxicants, not rewarding myself in ways that could promote growth, acting like a movie camera in the corner of a coffee shop, running like a streetcar, treating the underside of my Nissan like the Sistine Chapel ceiling, bulging into lycra, treadmilling toward honesty. It's not life, it's a sentence. It's the only throw you get. If you don't know what you're doing, don't touch anything. These pieces that don't know about each other. The multi-dimensional jigsaw I try to glimpse a shred of requires the multi-dimensional brain peeling back the halves, the synthesis of right and left meeting its own counterpart, an ermine, an energy the body wasn't built for. Gotta bring up the skirts of community. Gotta have just enough brambles to direct the flow not stepping where water turns to steam, interlacing the erosion of clay that keeps the brain from spinning inside itself. Being born is an unusual way to transmit information, to experiment with how this growth, maybe life that showed up and we had to get rid of it, 
like future generations discovering long buried nuclear waste, bright as a 15 month old, getting that sense of self, of balance, of being able to cry out and be attended. We get ours camouflaged. We find stronger weights and straps, sedative phrases with sticky zippers. We hypnotize ourselves with habit and risk fear. Stay emotionally secure. Have faith in something or other. Don't give a damn but the moment. The open valley, a sluice to numbness. Like each pore in my palms, a loudspeaker, what's playing through? A thousand famous speeches at once in languages forgotten or mutated beyond connotation. A self-morphing pictograph. I can't get beyond the third change. Have great potential, but can't apply it. Don't have confidence, don't have connections. I'm in the right place at the right time. I'm in the right place at exactly the wrong moment. Maybe you can remember everything you hear. Maybe you're built for sex, wired for speed, immune to sleep, limber as al dente, whether mentally or verbally, the array of resources, the ability to hold on to, time spent diverted. I dress like a billboard. I dress to fit in because I'm not allowed to be naked and it's usually cold here. I like it cold. I'm worried about what I spend for heat. My bill keeps going up. Is it maintenance or global cooling? El Nino or how the words of well-groomed well puppets influence our relationship with weather, which we create. Man plus world, world divided by man, man times man subtracting from world, there's no formula. We're fed formula. We're leveraged from the various moms. Dad is like a paycheck. Dad's the reason why, the obligation. Mom keeps singing like a siren. She has voices in her head, things she's holding back so she won't get slapped or saddened. Or he's stuck, struck. You and I are in pain. You and I are feeling, though, aren't feeling, obsessed about the lack of, internalized knots not allowing us to transform. Shape is a key. Someplace other than here, now is the time. What am I to do? I have the answer because what I am to do is to introduce the next reader. Uh, Gary Snyder, well known, still alive, re-graduate, uh, born in Seattle but spent part of his childhood in Portland, uh, again, time in Japan. He was the, the one bee who had a place to live and everybody else crashed with him at, uh, at different times. Ended up buying land and people would go out and crash with him there. Um, and, uh, but there's a lot of, you know, similarities between uh, Gary Snyder and, and, and Jen Coleman. They're, you know, they both spent time in, in the great north woods uh, working as a cook for a spell. And uh, redhead, freckles, fierce, bound to nature, uh, wide as the sky, Jen Coleman, <laughs> Gary Snyder, the earth. So Dan uh, just encouraged me to have another glass of wine, and I said, you know, Gary Snyder wouldn't have another glass of wine. I sort of feel like among the B poets, there was Ginsburg, and he was like, <laughs> you know, and then there was Kaufman, who was like, oh. and Joanne Kiger was like, eh. but Snyder was like the guy who was like measuring his pulse. He's like, yeah, I'm at about 40. I'm 100% oxygenated. I could go out, chase down a wolf, like skin it, no problem. You know? uh, very in control. And here he was in 1955, 25 years old, and he was the sort of steady guy. He was the guy who, who, who sort of turned the beats from, you know, self-destruction into mountain climbing, you know. Uh, and I want to read this poem that he read at all of 25 years old. If I had to read the poems I wrote at 25 years old, it would be mortifying. <laughs> A berry feast. 
Fur the color of mud, the smooth loper, crapulous old man, a drifter. Praises of Coyote the nasty, the fat puppy that abused himself, the ugly gambler, bringer of goodies. In bear shit, find it in August, neat pile on the fragrant trail, in late August, perhaps by a larch tree, bear has been eating berries. High meadow, late summer, snow gone, black bear eating berries, married to a woman whose breasts bleed from nursing the half-human cubs. Somewhere, of course, there are people collecting and junking and gibbering all day. Where I shoot my arrows, there is the sh sunflower shade. Song of the rattlesnake coiled in the boulder's groin. Cack, 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 sing coyote mating with humankind. The chainsaw falls, boards of pine, suburban bedrooms, block on block, will waver with this grain and knot. The maddening shapes will start and fade each morning when commuters wake. Joined boards, hung on frames, a box to catch the biped in. And shadow swings around the tree, shifting on berry bush from leaf to leaf across each day. The shadow swings around the tree. Three down through windows, dawn leaping cats, all barred brown gray. Whiskers aflame, bits of mouse on the tongue. Washing the coffee pot in the river, the baby yelling for breakfast, her breasts, black-nippled, blue-veined, heavy, hung through the loose shirt, squeezed with the free hand, white jet in three cups. Cats at dawn, dairy, dairy down. <laughs> Creeks wash clean where the trout hide. We chew the black plug, sleep on needles through long afternoons. You shall be an owl, you shall be a sparrow, you will grow thick and green, people will eat you, berries. Coyote shot from the car, two ears, a tail bring bounty. Planks of tread, oxen of shang, moving the measured road, bronze bells at the throat, bronze balls on the horn, the bright oxen chanting through sunlight and dust, wheeling logs down hills into heaps, into yellow, fat snout, caterpillar, tread toppling forward, leaf on leaf, roots in gold, volcanic dirt. When snow melts back from trees, bare branches, knobbed pine twigs, hot on wet flowers, green shoots of huckleberry breaking through snow. Belly stretched taut in a bulge, breasts swelling as you guzzle beer. Who wants nirvana? Here is wine, water, beer, enough books for a week, a mess of afterbirth, a smell of hot earth, a warm mist steams from the crotch. You can't be killers all your life. The people are coming. And when Magpie revived him, limp rag of fur in the river, drowned and drifting, fish food in the shallows, up yours, sang Coyote, and he ran. Delicate, blue back, black, sweeter from meadows, small and tart in valleys, with light blue dust. Huckleberries scatter through the pine woods, crowd along gullies, climb dusty cliffs, spread through the air by birds, find them in droppings of a bear. Stopped in the night. Ate hot pancakes in a bright room, drank coffee, read the paper in a strange town, drove on, singing as the drunkard swerved the car. Wake from your dreams, bright ladies, tighten your legs, squeeze demons from the quaint with rigid thighs. Young red-eyed men will come with limp erections, snuffing cries to dry your stiffening bodies in the sun. 
woke at the beach. Gray dawn, drenched with rain. One naked man frying horse meat on a stone. Coyote yaps, a knife. Sunrise on yellow rocks. People gone. Death, no disaster. Clear sun in the scubbed, scrubbed sky, empty and bright. Lizards scurry from darkness. We lizards, sun on yellow rocks. See, from the foothills, a shred of a river glinting, trailing to flat lines, flatlands, the city. Glare of haze in the valley horizon, sun caught on glass, gleams and goes. From cool springs under cedar, on his haunches, white grin, long tongue panting, he watches. Dead city in dry summer, where berries grow. So that's Gary Snyder at 25 years old. And today, he is 85 years old, and he just published what he says is his last book of poems, which is not to say it's his last book. He may publish other things, but he, he feels like he's done with poems. But just in case he's not, just in case there might be some more poems, I have a poem for Gary Snyder to consider. And I would like you all to hear this poem of mine called Gary Snyder's Breasts. <laughs> Beard the color of mud, wrinkled poet, mystical old man hung up on Indians, praises. At 85, you really have cared for yourself, old Boy Scout model of health and sanity. <laughs> Who am I, Gary Snyder? Who am I, having never carved a deer carcass, built my own house, climbed Everest, cooked a bullfrog for dinner. <laughs> Who am I, Gary Snyder, knowing little of geology, logging, communal living, landscape painting, or de Tibetan deities? Well, I am a woman poet. I am a woman poet the way you are a nature poet, a poet as you are a poet, woman as you are nature, an animal too. I'm a beast, a scaly beast, and also feathered and with naked skin. And maybe I write with a vulture feather too. I don't, <laughs> but maybe I do. <laughs> Gary Snyder, poet to poet, I am asking you now, let go of the breasts. You have too many breasts already. You have 19 books of poems with as many breasts, women's breasts, not your breasts, as I have nouns in my single book of poems. I am asking you, old poet, let go of the breasts. The breasts you thought you lay down in ink as the real thing. The breasts you maybe lay down in praise or to unlock the breasts from their own structure, to unlock breasts from breasts to go out and share themselves with others. But Gary Snyder, grandfather, they might once have been your breasts, or breasts you conjured, imaginary breasts with real eyes on them. <laughs> but I'm telling you now, I'm taking the breasts from your poems and inviting them here to mine, where there is space for them here and here and here and here if they choose, if they want to be, if they want to be images, okay, and if they want to be lobes, okay, and if they want to mean something, okay. But the invitation is already out. I extended it, and it's time you just let the breasts go <laughs> in return. I will give you time. I have far too much time in my poems. I will give you time. Blue-veined and heavy, alabaster, withered time that bleeds. Time to warm your cold hands on, to cup and to kiss. Wow. Did I say her name's Jen Coleman? I don't remember, but yes. And, and now, 
we will uh, close with uh, with Howl in Pieces. You'll hear some different voices. And uh, originally, the, this was what Ginsburg read uh, and then other poems that Chris did, but, but the poem that Snyder read was what, what Jen read too. But we'll, uh, we'll howl. Chris? <coughs> Howl for Carl Solomon. I saw the best minds of my generation destroyed by madness, starving, hysterical, naked, dragging themselves through the Negro streets at dawn looking for an angry fix. Angel-headed hipsters burning for the ancient heavenly connection to the starry dynamo in the machinery of night. Who poverty and tatters and hollow-eyed and high sat up smoking in the supernatural darkness of cold water flats floating across the tops of cities contemplating jazz. Who bared their brains to heaven under the L and saw Mohammedan angels staggering on tenement roofs illuminated. Who passed through universities with radiant cool eyes hallucinating Arkansas and Blake-like tragedy among the scholars of war. Who were expelled from the academ academies for crazy and publishing obscene odes on the windows of the skull who covered in unshaven rooms and underwear, burning their money in waste baskets and listening to the terror through the wall, who got busted in their pubic beards, returning through Laredo with a belt of marijuana for New York. Who ate fire at paint hotels or drank turpentine in Paradise Alley, death or perpetuated their torsos night after night with dreams and with drugs with waking nightmares, alcohol, and cock, and endless balls. Incompatible blind streets of shuddering closed and lightning in the mind, leaping toward points of Canada and Patterson, illuminating all the motionless world of time between. Peyote solitude of halls, backyard green trees, cemetery dawns, wine drunkenness over the rooftops, storefront burrows of tethered joyride, neon blinking traffic light, sun and moon and tree vibrations and the roaring winter shrieks of Bob Brooklyn, ash can rantings and kind king light of mind, who charmed themselves to subways for the endless ride from Battery to Holy Bronx on Benzedrine until the noise of wheels and children brought them down shuddering mouth racked and battered bleak of brain, all drained of brilliance by the drear light of zoo, who woke all night in submarine light of Bickford's, floating out and sat through the stale bare afternoon in desolate Fugazis, listening to the crack of doom on the hydrogen jukebox. We talk continuously 70 hours from park to pad to bar to Bellevue to museum to the Brooklyn Bridge, a lost battalion of platonic conversationalists jumping down the stoops, off fire escapes, off windowsills, off Empire State, out of the moon, yakety yakety, screaming, vomiting, whispering facts and memories and anecdotes and eyeball kicks and shocks of hospitals and jails and wars, whose intellects disgorge in total recall for seven days and night with brilliant eyes meet for the synagogue cast on the pavement who vanished into nowhere, Zen, New Jersey, leaving a trail of ambiguous picture postcards of Atlantic City Hall, suffering eastern sweats and Tangerian bone grindings and migraines of China under junk withdrawal and Newark's bleak furnished room who wandered around and around at midnight in the railroad yard wondering where to go and went, leaving no broken hearts, who lit cigarettes in boxcars, 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 racketing through snow toward lonesome farms and Grandfather Knight, who studied Plutonius, Poe, St. John of the Cross, telepathy, and Bach Kabbalah because the cosmos instinctively vibrated at their feet in Kansas, who loaned it through the streets of Idaho, seeking visionary Indian angels who were visionary Indian angels who thought they were only mad when Baltimore gleamed in supernatural ecstasy. Who jumped in limousines with the Chinamen of Oklahoma on the impulse of winter midnight streetlight small town rain? Who lounged hungry and lonesome through Houston seeking jazz or sex or soup 
and followed the brilliant Spaniard to converse about America and eternity, a hopeless task, and so took ship to Africa, who disappeared into the volcanoes of Mexico, leaving behind nothing but the shadow of dungarees and the lava and ash of poetry scattered in fireplace Chicago, who reappeared on the West Coast, investigating the FBI in beards and shorts with big pacifist eyes, sexy in their dark skin, passing out incomprehensible leaflets, who burned cigarette holes in their arms, protesting the narcotic tobacco haze of capitalism, who distributed super communist pamphlets in Union Square, weeping and undressing while the sirens of Los Alamos wailed them down and wailed down wall, and the Staten Island Ferry also wailed, who broke down crying in white gymnasiums, naked and trembling before the machinery of other skeletons, who bit detectives in the neck and shrieked with delight in police cars for committing no crime but their own wild cooking pederasty and intoxication, who howled on their knees in the subway and were dragged off the roof waving genitals and manuscripts, who let themselves be fucked in the ass by saintly motorcyclists and screamed with joy, who blew and were blown by those human seraphim, the sailors, caresses of Atlantic and Caribbean love, who bawled in the morning and the evenings in rose gardens and the grass of public parks and cemeteries, scattering their semen freely to whomever come who may, who hiccuped endlessly, trying to giggle, but wound up with a sob behind a partition in a Turkish bath when the blonde and naked angel came to pierce them with a sword, who lost their love boys to the three old shrews of fate, the one-eyed shrew of the heterosexual dollar, the one-eyed shrew that winks out of the womb, and the one-eyed shrew that does nothing but sit on her ass and snip the intellectual golden threads of the craftsman's loom, who copulated ecstatic with insatiate, with a bottle of beer, a sweetheart, a package of cigarettes, a candle, and fell off the bed and continued along the floor and down the hall and ended fainting on the wall with a vision of ultimate cunt and cum, eluding the last jism of consciousness. Who sweetened, sweetened the snatches of a million girls trembling in the sunset and were red-eyed in the morning but prepared to sweeten the snatch of the sunrise, <laughs> flashing buttocks under barns and naked in the lake, who went out whoring through Colorado in myriad stolen night cars, North Carolina's secret hero of these poems, Coxman and Adonis of Denver, joy to the memory of his innumerable ways of girls and empty lots and diner backyards, movie houses Ricky rose on mountaintops in caves or with gaunt waitresses in familiar roadside lonely petticoat upliftings and especially secret gas station solipsisms of John and hometown alleys too, who faded out in vast sordid movies, were shifted in dreams, woke on a sudden Manhattan and picked themselves up out of basements hung over with heartless cocaine and horrors of Third Avenue iron dreams and stumbled to unemployment offices who walked all night with their shoes full of blood on the snowbank docks waiting for a door in the East River to open to a room full of steam heat and opium who created great suicidal dramas on the apartment cliff banks of the Hudson under the wartime blue floodlight of the moon, and their heads shall be crowned with laurel in oblivion, who ate the lamb stew of the imagination, or digested the crab at the muddy bottom of the rivers of the Bowery. Who wept at the romance of the streets with their push carts full of onions and bad music. Who sat in boxes breathing in the darkness under the bridge and rose up to build harpsichords in their lofts who coughed on the sixth floor of Harlem, crowned with flame under the tubercular sky, surrounded by orange crates of theology, who scribbled all night, rocking and rolling over lofty incantations, which in the yellow morning were stanzas of gibberish, who cooked rotten animals, lung, heart, feet, tail, borscht, and tortillas, dreaming of the pure vegetable kingdom, who plunged themselves under meat trucks, looking for an egg, who threw their watches off the roof to cast their ballot for eternity outside of time, and alarm clocks fell on their heads for every day, every day for the next decade. <laughs> Who cut their wrists three times successfully, unsuccessfully, gave up and were forced to open antique stores where they thought they were growing old and cried. 
who were burned alive in their innocent flannel suits on Madison Avenue amid blasts of leaden verse and the tanked up clatter of the iron regiments of fashion and the nitroglycerin shrieks of the fairies of advertising and the mustard gas of sinister intelligent editors or were run down by the drunken taxi cabs of absolute reality. Who jumped off the Brooklyn Bridge this actually happened, and walked away unknown and forgotten into the ghostly days of Chinatown, soup alleyways, and fire trucks, and not even one free beer. Who sang out their windows in despair, fell out of the subway window, jumped in the filthy Passaic, leaped on Negroes, cried all over the street, danced on broken wine glasses, barefoot smashed phonograph records of nostalgic European 1930s German jazz, finished the whiskey and threw up, groaning into the bloody toilet, moans in their ears, and the blast of colossal steam whistles, who barreled down the highways of the past, turning to each other's hot rod, Golgotha, jail solitude watch, or Birmingham jazz incarnation, who drove cross country 72 hours to find out if I had a vision, or you had a vision, or he had a vision to find out eternity who journeyed to Denver, who died in Denver, who came back to Denver and waited in vain, who watched over Denver and brooded and loaned in Denver, and finally went away to find out the time, and now Denver is lonesome for her heroes, who fell on their knees in hopeless cathedrals, praying for each other's salvation and light with breasts until the soul illuminated its hair for a second. Who crashed through their minds in jail, waiting for and the charm of reality of parts of saying sweet blues to Alcatraz. Retired to Mexico to cultivate a habit, or Rocky Mount to tender Buddha, or Tangiers to boys, or Southern Pacific to the black locomotive, or Harbor to Narcissus to Woodlawn and the daisy chain of grave. And we ended seeing the trials accusing the radio of hypnotism and were left with their sanity and their hands and the jury who threw their potato salad at the City College of New York lecturers on Dadaism and subsequently <laughs> presented themselves on the granite steps of the madhouse with shaven heads and Parliament's speech of suicide demanding instantaneous lobotomy, who were given instead the concrete void of insulin, metastrol, electricity, hydrotherapy, psychotherapy, occupational therapy, ping pong, and amnesia, who in humorless protests were returned only one symbolic ping-pong table, resting briefly in catatonia, and turning years later, truly bald except for a wig of blood and tears and fingers to the visible madman doom of the wards of the mad towns of the East, pilgrim states, rocklands, and gray stones, fetid halls, bickering with the echoes of the soul, rocking and rolling in the midnight solitude the bench, dull and relevant to the love with mother finally fucked and the last fantastic book flung out of the tenement window and the last door closed at 4 a.m. and the last telephone slammed at the wall in reply and the last furnished room emptied down to the last piece of mental furniture a yellow paper rose twisted on a wire hanger in the closet and even that imaginary nothing but a hopeful little bit of hallucination Ah, Carl, while you are not safe, I am not safe. And now you're really in the total animal soup of time. And who therefore ran through the icy streets obsessed with a sudden flash of the alchemy of the use of the ellipse, the catalog, the meter, and the vibrating plane? Who dreamt and made incarnate gaps in time and space through images juxtaposed and trapped the archangel of the soul between two visual images and joined the elemental verbs and set the noun and dash and consciousness together jumping with sensation of pater omnipotens eterna deus, to recreate the syntax and measure of poor human prose and stand before you speechless and intelligent and shaking with shame, rejected yet confessing out the soul to conform to the rhythm of thought in his naked and endless head, the madman bum and angel beat in time, unknown, yet putting down here what might be left to say in time come after death, and rose reincarnate, in the ghostly clothes of jazz and the gold horn shadow of the band and blew the suffering of America's naked mind for love into the Eli Eli Lama Lama Sabachthani saxophone cry that shivered the cities down to the last radio 
with the absolute heart of the poem of life butchered out of their own bodies, good to eat a thousand years. Part one, how by Allen Ginsberg, first revealed 60 years ago. <laughs> Many thanks and gratitude. Thanks to our, our, our readers tonight, Casey Bush, Sam Lohman, Jen Coleman, Christopher Luna, Pancho Savory, somebody else? No, me. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks to IPRC. This is a great space. IPRC, uh, check out their, uh, their, their website and their offerings. They have writing classes, publishing classes, classes related to arts and graphic reproduction. Lots of good things happening here. And where else can you hear the bus and the train and the traffic and poetry all at the same time? Yeah. And, uh, and thank you all for being here. It's such a great day. They always find poets, but to find people who listen to them is a lot more difficult. So thank you. <laughs>